I know you guys know that I love my cultural art. So today I'm actually gonna be showing you guys some of my favorite finds from the last few weeks, but the rule is they have to be from other countries and they have some really amazing histories and stories and they're from some really cool places. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. Cultures can be exciting, you guys. There's tons of different art forms, different belief systems that have really generated some really cool things that we can all sort of be on the lookout for. And one of those amazing cultures is actually from West Africa in a place called Mali. There is a very specific tribe called the Bozo tribe, and they actually create some really amazing tribal art. Some of the coolest masks and statues that you're ever going to find. Their art is incredibly popular and super famous because it's so different from so many other tribes within that area. There's a lot of color. They actually use a lot of clothing to dress their statues and their figurines with. And the other really cool thing about a lot of their art is that it moves. They'll make these really elaborate over the top masks that you would wear on your head and it would be maybe shaped like a giant bird and maybe the beak opens and closes. Or maybe it's just like this thing here. This is a really great example of one of their marionette pieces. So the arms on this will move, the tail on this will move. Everything has some kind of function or some kind of an action and it actually comes apart in separate pieces. The colors on this are really cool and you can kind of get an idea of the way that they paint some of their statues. And as you can see, there's some fabric on this piece. They actually do a lot of their pieces and they dress them in clothes and the horse even has clothes in this situation. It's big. I ended up getting it because they only wanted $60. How do you leave something sitting there for $60 like this. Like you can't, this is incredible. Like, look at this. Here's the head of the horse. Then here's the statue of the person. And then the tail's all the way over here. But you can see like the horse has clothes. This person here has clothes and everything moves. The horse's head actually comes off. See, and then the tail comes off also. So originally this would have had a man that was also sitting on the horse and it would have been sitting in front of her and he would have held the sword outward like this and it would have been like they were charging into the sunset together. Uh, but I don't know what happened to the man. So now it's just this, this, this woman all alone with her husband's sword and she's just riding this horse by herself for all eternity. Thank you for being a part of my life, young lady. There are some really cool things that you can find that come out of Africa. It's a very, very big place with a lot of very diverse cultures, but not only do they have really cool art, but they also have some really cool functional pieces. So you can find a lot of really cool furniture. I don't know if you guys remember when I was kind of getting this space together, I had shown you some really cool antique African birthing chairs and those were really cool because those were from the Lobi people in Burkina Faso, but those were super legit. Like those were probably used pieces that were just very old and that were still around. One of them is already sold, unfortunately. That's when you know you love your stuff, right? Is when you're like, unfortunately it's sold. The next thing I'm gonna show you guys is another African chair from this antique shop. And this one's totally different. So this is actually really cool. And people still call these birthing chairs, even though they're totally not birthing chairs. This is probably from the Zimbabwe Zimbabwe area and it's definitely gonna be geared more towards the tourist trade, but they're still really collectible. They're still very cool and people still buy these for a good amount of money. Now they want $75 for this, which is quite a bit because it's a definitely a smaller size, but I'm probably gonna get it anyways, just because that's sort of my struggle when I find really cool tribal art that I want. This is really small. This is very small, tiny. It's a tiny chair. The older ones are not gonna have this kind of detailing. So it's kind of like to appeal more to tourists and people that might be wanting to buy this as like a decorative piece for their home. And you can find some really elaborate ones that are actually full size chairs for adults. So it's actually kind of a cool accent piece that you can have in your house. And then this comes out and then you can store it pretty easily and it doesn't take up a lot of space. 
Now the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is really, really cool. And this is from Southeast Asia from a place called Bhutan. And this is actually a really small little country that's sort of nestled right between Tibet and India. So as you can imagine, it's just an amazing place for all of these cultures to just kind of like mix and create some really amazing art. You guys, this is a dance mask that I found at an antique shop for $35. Bhutan is actually really famous for a lot of their dance ceremonies because they do a lot of different dance ceremonies and a lot of them are annual, but they're gonna have multiple ceremonies a month. And because they are so centrally located, there's all kinds of different people that come from all over the country and different countries and surrounding areas to go to these different events and these different dance ceremonies where they have really elaborate costumes and really cool masks. And it would have been worn like this. Then you just look through the mouth and you can see everything you need to see. In their dance ceremonies, they have a whole cast of characters, tons of different masks that represent different gods. The tiger represents the wind element and it would also represent confidence and it also represents modesty and kindness. They use some really, really cool colors on their masks and on their different costumes. And if you guys like these colors, you're gonna like the next thing that I'm gonna show you. When I was at the flea market, I ended up finding this really incredible table and it's completely completely hand painted. The detailing on this thing is amazing. The coloring is so cool. And this is what's called a musharabi table. And they actually make these in a lot of different styles. So you're gonna see the same style coming out of different countries. So they make similar styles in India and Syria, and they're all gonna be a little bit different. Like the ones in Syria are gonna just be wood with some really beautiful mother of pearl detailing. The ones out of Egypt are also gonna have really cool inlay detailing. And then the ones in India India are gonna be painted kind of similar to this one here. It's got a, a lot of the same elements that you're gonna see in some of the architecture in Morocco, um, from like the windows and the doorways, and the coloring on this is really cool. And then here's the top, all hand painted. This is about as big as I go on furniture because anything bigger than this becomes really difficult to ship. This will probably go for like $150 to $200. They only wanted $25 for it, so I don't mind spending $25 on something like this. And now you guys, the next thing I'm gonna show you has some really cool coloring on it too, but this is actually from Romania. I was at this antique shop and they had this amazing piece of art glass just sitting on this table. They weren't even asking $60 for this thing. This is actually from an artist named Nimtoy and Nimtoy is one of the most famous Romanian art class artists that is still alive till this very day, making some really incredible stuff. But if you go to his website, a piece like this would go for several thousand dollars. It's very expensive, and so I had to get it. The coloring on this is really great, and it's a really good size. And then all of his pieces are gonna be signed. It's got his signature here on the bottom, so it's definitely easy to spot. When this artist was trying to learn how to do glass, he ended up moving to the capital of Romania and studying for several years. And then finally, when he sort of mastered his craft, he ended up going back to his hometown because he wanted to bring his business there and bring prosperity there to the people that needed money and jobs, which I think is like pretty admirable. One of the things that really worked out in his favor is the sand in this area ended up being perfect for glass making, which is one of the most important elements. So it really worked out well for everybody and they have a thriving art glass studio there till this very day making some really, really amazing stuff. Anytime you see a piece of his out in the wild, that's something you may wanna get. The next thing that I'm gonna show you guys from this antique shop is a little bit mind blowing because I've never seen one of these before. Like, this is actually super cool. So this is from the Philippines and this is what's called a Moro sword. I've literally never seen one this size. So they have this sword sprawled out on the shelf and they're only asking $50 for it. And it's massive, it's massive. And just the detailing of, on the brass alone I'm like, I need this sword. Like they can't open this case fast enough to give it to me because I absolutely love it. But I've never seen a sword quite like this before. I've seen really small Moro swords from the Philippines. So this is just something that you just don't see very often. The handle is the size of my head, just the handle. You pull it out and it's got this like really cool wavy blade. Like don't mess with me when I'm carrying my wavy blade sword. Here's the sheath. 
The, the end has sort of a similar look to the handle, but it still has that same amazing brass work to it. What makes this piece so different is it's got a lot of Islamic design elements to it um, because you're gonna see a lot of really cool Islamic swords that are made called Shamshir swords, and they have a really similar design to this, but then this has the Southeast Asian elements to it, so it's this really cool mixture of different cultures that's very cool, and the size, the size, I don't even know how much something like this is gonna go for because I've never seen one of these before. So those are always my favorite things to show you guys is the stuff that I'm just like, I don't know, I don't know. So I'll have to keep you guys updated if it's just like some crazy thing that I find out something crazy about later on. The next thing I'm gonna show you guys is something out of my house that I've already shown you guys. So why am I showing it to you again, you ask? Well, <laughs> let me explain. So if you guys came along with me for my home tour a few months back, I showed you this thing that I found at a flea market for a dollar, and it was basically just this gold rhinoceros head that I stuck to the wall. Now, I don't know, I live in California. There's like earthquakes constantly where I live. So like, it's not a big surprise that I came home and this poor rhinoceros was shattered all over the floor, broken into 10,000 pieces. I had just asked you guys last week, what was a hobby that you guys wanted to do? And I kept talking about how I needed to get a hobby and I should look into that. And one of the things that I've always thought was really cool was the Japanese art of kintsugi. And I don't know if any of you guys have heard of this, but basically when something's broken, you put it back together and you use like really beautiful gold glue to put it back together. And it sort of has a great look because it highlights all of the cracks. And what I absolutely love about this art is the philosophy behind it and the whole philosophy of it sort of encompasses the idea of accepting change and not having attachment to certain items so if something breaks it's okay, it's not that big of a deal. You weren't attached to it and you've just accepted it and now it's gonna become something even more amazing. And what ends up happening is these pieces that were broken are glued back together with this like incredible gold leaf that makes them look absolutely amazing. And I've always looked at this Kintsugi art and I'm like, this looks awesome. Like I wanna just break things to fix it, which I think sort of defeats the whole purpose of the whole concept of that anyways. So it just happened that my rhinoceros had broke. The only problem is, is you're supposed to glue it together with gold leaf and this is already gold. So you wouldn't even be able to see the cracks and it just would probably look really bad. So you guys, I wanted to try Kintsugi and I did. Instead of using gold, I thought it would be cool to really highlight the cracks with black. I went and got this really cool epoxy and then I also got some black paint that I could kind of highlight the cracks with. You guys, this took like two days. People with hobbies. What? How? I literally did this for two days. Two days. I had to glue and hold all these pieces together, which is really hard to do. Have you ever tried to like re-glue something together that just like doesn't want to like all stay together at the same time? It was really hard and then it was a mess. I had like epoxy and paint all over it and then I had to go get acetone. Acetone and taking off like epoxy and paint and it was just really, really like I will never do this again. But there was like a brief moment where I'm like, maybe this could be my new job. I could just be a Kintsugi artist for the rest of my life and just fix people's broken things. So anyways, you guys, look at how this ended up looking. This is better than it was originally. I mean, he looks like super cool and very angry. Can I just say I'm absolutely terrified to hang this back up again? Because if this falls a second time, like I am not, I am not doing it again. I am absolutely not gonna go out and spend another $98.37 on epoxies and paints and all the stuff that you need to fix something that only costed $2 to begin with. Like, what, what, what am I, who am I? Who am with my hobby? Now I don't even want the hobby anymore. But I was excited to show that to you guys. I know you would love the transformation of the rhinoceros head. We covered a lot of different materials and different things that this art was made out of. We have metal weapons and art glass and we have pottery and some wood carving. So I'm actually really curious what your favorite type 
of art is. Do you guys like the hand carved wood? Do you guys like the art glass a little bit more? Or is there a different type of art that you guys like? There's a lot of other elements that we didn't even cover. So I'm actually really curious what some of your favorite mediums are for the art that you guys like to learn about. Leave your comment in the comment section below. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, make sure you do it now so you don't miss future episodes. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.